piece uh, with a slight delay because for uh, my obvious reasons uh, here in Belgium from time to time uh, we do enjoy rain so uh, there is a, a good reason with this slight delay but finally we can start it's my great great pleasure to welcome all of you excellences the members of European Parliament ladies and gentlemen and uh, first of all the friends of the European Endowment for Democracy it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you during this uh, anniversary event, reception, celebration, whatever we call it, it's just a moment where we want all share with you a few reflections about how EED started and how strongly it was supported by so many. Uh, these speeches will uh, take uh, some time. We want to have a few official speeches, uh, maybe not that official. We want to have a few of our beneficiaries that we invited for this celebration to tell you just a one minute who they are and what kind of work they're doing. And then uh, we will also uh, um, invite you to watch a short video that is uh, produced specifically on this uh, occasion. So may I start first uh, with uh, Elmar Brock, uh, member of the European Parliament, the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee, but first of all, the chair of the board of the European Endowment for Democracy. And thank you very much, Elmar, for coming. And if I may ask you for the few words on this occasion, that would be, we'll be very grateful. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much for this invitation, the opportunity to say a few words here. We're just an EPP group meeting here where Jean-Claude Juncker was, and I thought I shouldn't miss it. And uh, I hope Alexander has made a similar good impression in your group as he did this afternoon in our group. Also, I'm a little bit on the wrong trap today because we Germans have lost any sense for reality since last night. <laughs> now we hope that we have to play against Argentina in the finals because if we lose against Argentina it's not so bitter as to lose against the Netherlands. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to hear to commemorate, commemorate the, the first year of the endowment's activities. I think after 12 months, uh, we can say that this has a potential to become a European success story. Working together European member states, together European institutions, Parliament, Commission, EES, have created a unique organization that is making a real difference for democracy activists in the European neighborhood. I think it's important that the old dream of the European Parliament as well as met with the interests and themes of some member countries like Poland, that we need in supporting democracy and human rights, needs more flexibility than you can use it in a normal commission deliberations. I think, therefore, the emergence of the European Endowment of Democracy for Democracy would not have come in at a more important time and we see how the development of the, uh, of the eastern neighborhood, the, west, uh, the southern neighborhood is with other places. And I think the concentration we had in the very beginning was a very good thing and if we develop it that way. And more member countries would be take part, not just in supporting us by heart, in board meetings, but also by finances. I think uh, this could even become better and we have now a debate about enlarging the mandate of this institution. The events in Ukraine, Egypt and elsewhere have been very dramatic. And I must say, and thank you to you, Jerry, the staff, Alexander, to the executive board, that it was done in a lot of speed, expertise and flexibility to find solutions here. It has made a big difference. And if I see, for example, how fast the endowment was in certain emergency questions in Ukraine, together with the Maidan, and if I see it also for 
innovative solutions were found in countries like Egypt and Azerbaijan. To give examples, and it shows how important it is that in Azerbaijan there is no independent newspaper again available as something to do with that. And uh, I think this makes a difference. Other great examples of our work today are celebrated here tonight, and I thank all the people who will give us a look into the showcases what was achieved already. Indeed, the EED beneficiaries are the best ones to describe the difference that we have made. Today you will see, read and hear their stories. Ten are present today and can tell you what, are, what they are doing to advance democracy in their countries with the report of the EED. All this would not have been possible without the unique combination of the enabling factors of the institutions of member states. But I would like to pay tribute to the whole EED team, the committed work of the EED board, the extremely hand-working executive committee, the very competent, talented staff and visual leadership of the Secretariat. And we have to see, as we started one year ago, it was not there. It also to recruit it, has to develop all with that staff and to do that at the same time, Jesse. Thank you very much for that. And this first year give us hope that we will create a really thing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elba. Thank you for this kind words. May I now invite our two beneficiaries, Maria Saduska Komlak from the Radio for Belarus and uh, Shamsi Sarkis uh, from uh, uh, Independent Media in Syria. Uh, if you can say just uh, one word about uh, what you are doing. Shamsi and Maria, come, 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 please. Maria, please. Okay, good evening, everyone. I represent Belarus, which is not a new member or even an associate, but we as European Radio for Belarus have been working for eight years to bring the Europe closer to Belarusians and to bring Belarusians closer to the future they deserve. In this process, we've been supported by many friends and partners, but today we're here for the European Endowment for Democracy, which alongside with Belarus supports initiatives from Syria, Lebanon, Morocco, Ukraine, Azerbaijan, and probably many more countries. So I would like to say what our experience of work with European for, Endowment for Democracy has proved us. Earlier today, the previous speaker, Mr. Pominowski, said that they are like a short-term partner, a very relaxed one, but you meet with them and soon they disappear. I would like to contradict this metaphor. I think that European Endowment for Democracy is like ER services when you can't visit your regular doctor. They appear in the very challenging moment when you can die or disappear, or in our case, lose one-third of your audience just because your, your regular doctor doesn't have an appointment for you. So here my comparison with ER ends, although I think that for this life saving event <laughs> efforts, they deserve our applause. And I would like to just finish what is, with what is different. Unlike with ER, which you hope to be your last experience in your life and not meet those doctors anymore, you, with EED, you can meet a fascinating network of committed individuals and organizations from all over the world that inspire you in bringing forward changes that you find for in your country. So I hope that in further years, EED will continue this important work and we will all meet together, even if we are anymore, not anymore a beneficiary. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shamsi Sarkis, I'm Syrian, and uh, I represent an NGO registered in French called Association de Soutien Media Libre, which aims at sustaining free and independent media in Syria. That's a weird thing, talking about free and independent media during a war, a messy war, uh, but actually there are hundreds of very interesting media projects uh, that appeared in Syria during the last three years. And we selected a few of them. We could not help everybody. So um, EED has granted us uh, with some help to uh, print and distribute 12 magazines inside Syria in 300 points 
in six different governorates. Um, one of the magazines, my favorite one, is a magazine for young children, aged from four to ten years old, an educative magazine. So it's not, media is not only uh, something to inform people, but it's also to educate people. Um, I'm very happy that Europe uh, was able to recognize that a very ground-rooted project that may terrify many people, like don't let people work in Syria, everybody will die, everybody will be killed. Yes, there are security issues, but yes, there are people working in Syria for three years and there are the Syri Syrians themselves. And I'm very proud that we received this one from, from the European uh, Endowment for Democracy uh, that is supporting a Syrian-rooted uh, project um, supporting Syrian project for Syrian locally inside the country during the war. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, there will be more uh, uh, from beneficiaries, uh, but now <clears throat> I would like to ask uh, the chair of the executive committee, which is actually the chair of the funding committee that takes every funding decision, and uh, the funding committee, uh, who other members are also present here, is working extremely hard. In just uh, uh, eight months of uh, active uh, analysis of the different projects, they've been able to make uh, 111 funding decisions. And uh, I can uh, assure you that this wouldn't be possible without extremely skillful and visionary chairmanship of executive committee that is uh, 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 by, done by uh, Alexander Graf von Lambsdorff, the member of the European Parliament and the Vice President of the European Parliament, recently elected. Congratulations. I will not congratulate once again on German victory yesterday because we all feel so Brazilians these days that we could not afford <laughs> any further congratulations. Alexander, the floor is yours. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. You don't need to feel Brazilian, it's okay to feel German. <laughs> Now, let me just thank you all for being here and celebrating this, this wonderful anniversary. Um, it is a wonderful occasion, and it's also an occasion to perhaps look back a few minutes and, and remember how all of this came about. Um, initially, the process was a bit similar to scorpions making love. You had to move extremely cautiously. You were never sure whether you would get poisoned or not, and whether somebody would die in the process, politically speaking. <laughs> this applies to the member states. Poland was, of course, the initiator, but there were other member states who didn't think it was such a great idea. In the European Parliament, there were certain political groups who were much more enthusiastic about it from the outset than others. So everybody was moving around, and then, to make it all even more complicated, we added in NGOs. Now, NGOs, diplomats, parliamentarians, it's a, it's a very funny mix. And you rarely have these groups mixing together, such as in the EED. But you know what? This heterogeneity, this diversity, this mix of experiences, this mix of perspectives, is what makes the EED unique, makes it successful, and, of course, a very, very hard-working secretariat, because what Yerzy fails to tell you is, while we have taken 111 funding decisions so far, more than a thousand reached the members of the secretariat who had to make the assessments which ones were worthy, which one could be followed up. And for those of you who are beneficiaries here today, let me congratulate all of you. You can see that it's about 10% who actually get a grant. So you are among the top 10% here. All the beneficiaries who are here today deserve, deserve recognition, not only for the work they've done, but also for the fact that they've actually gotten the grants from the EED. And I'm very delighted to have so many beneficiaries here today with us. It was a very turbulent year. The neighborhood of the European Union, Elma has mentioned that, has been in upheaval, really, in many, many parts. Egypt has been mentioned, Ukraine, Syria, everywhere we look, people are fighting for change and for a better future. And the challenges, the challenges that were posed to us by this, security concerns have been mentioned. We try to deal with them with a mix of idealism, realism, and pragmatism. It is this mix that we try to apply, and I think by doing this, we have achieved our goals of maximum flexibility, quick reaction, small to medium grants without too much bureaucratic hassle for the grantees. I think 
that this shows that with the right people and with motivation, anything is possible because to get such an organization off the ground in a relatively short time here in Brussels, I think, is quite remarkable. Let me thank the members of the Executive Committee who are here and who have seen Pavel Demes is here from Slovakia. I've seen Lisbeth Pilegard back there from Denmark. Well, yeah, there you are, Lisbeth. Um, and I, all the others who have made taken part in these decisions. I can tell you, we meet every six to eight weeks and we spend nearly an entire day pouring through the projects and grilling the people who are preparing them for us. It's not always easy uh, for them, but uh, Pavel, Lisbeth, Sandra and all the others bring their long grant-making skills to this process, which is extremely beneficial to the entire process. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, last but certainly not least, I would like to honor the beneficiaries who are present here today, but also those who are not. Some of them believe in change, they fight for change, but they could not come. Some are, as a matter of fact, in prison. Some are not able to leave their country. These are the people we want to support. These are the people we will continue to support because they fight. These people are leading, is inspiring, but it is also humbling. And sometimes it is even a bit depressing, but we must carry on. We must carry on in the fight for democracy in our European neighborhood. I would like to thank you very much, Yaji. I would like to thank all of you for coming. I would like all of us to have a wonderful evening here tonight, celebrating the first anniversary of the EED and Argentina's victory tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexander, for kind words, uh, and thank you very much for the work, and we look forward further to serve Executive Committee with the best quality work we, as a Secretary, can do for you. Uh, let me invite Ravan Yaghi and uh, Rahim Hajiev uh, to the stage uh, to say just a few words. Uh, Ravan Yaghi is uh, from the, uh, Lebanon, and uh, Rahim Hajiev is from Azerbaijan. Uh, Rahim. Thank you very much for the invitation. Спасибо за вашу поддержку. Thank you for your support. Сразу скажу, что я приехал из страны, где очень много нефти, очень много газа и очень много коррупции. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm coming from a country uh, which has a lot of gas, petrol, and corruption. Чиновников, коррупционеров, если когда называют коррупционерами, они попадают на газету в суд за то, что Значит, это называется да, клевета. Uh, when the, a person, when an, uh, a member of the authority is called corruptioner, he goes to the court and said that it's not true. Без преувеличения могу сказать, что наш небольшой коллектив, коллектив нашей газеты, единственная в стране, которая до сих пор продолжает э, 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 разоплачительные статьи, материалы относительно всех коррупционных дел в Азербайджане. I will not exaggerate if I say that our newspaper is the only one that continues uh, writing about these people. Это славная история, небольшой коллектив газеты в борьбе в стране существующим страшным коррупционным режимом. It is a great story of a very small team uh, which survives in uh, in a very corrupt country. Я думаю, что когда вы боретесь за светлые идеалы, это вам дает огромную силу. Несмотря на то, что за два месяца зарплату не получаете, несмотря на то, что репрессивный режим продолжает свою политику, несмотря ни на какие трудности и сложности. Uh, when you are fighting for your ideas, uh, you still uh, overcome all the difficulties and uh, all the obstacles that appear in your way. Мы в своей стране боремся за свободу, за торжество демократии, и мы считаем вправе себя рассчитывать на поддержку свободных людей за то, что мы боремся за свободу свою. Um, in our country we fight for the freedom, for democracy, and I think that we can and have to receive support from free people. Спасибо огромное, спасибо большое за вашу поддержку. Thank you very much for your support. Newspaper of Azerbaijan. Rahman. Hello. Uh, I'm Rawan Yaghi and uh, I am the founder and director of YouSpeak, which is in Valbar, Lebanon. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, the European Endowment for Democracy for their invitation today to celebrate together their first anniversary. 
Uh, I would like to uh, tell how uh, the European Endowment uh, for Democracy was different for us in three ways. Uh, first, throughout the proposal, I'm going to be so pragmatic. Uh, throughout the proposal, uh, we had uh, like an advice all the time and uh, people were talking to us and asking about certain points that were not uh, clear enough or they, they were wondering if that's true or not and that barely happens in the society of the non-governmental organizations. Uh, the second point that was different for us uh, was the opportunity. As you speak is not a registered uh, organization, or wasn't yet at that time. Uh, we were just a group of people who uh, believed in our community and believed that as citizens we can uh, make some difference. And uh, we had some initiatives that were supported by uh, some uh, donors, but that was the first time that we got like, uh, something as much as our dream and ambition. Someone has just believed in us, believed in the initiative, and felt that they can just help us, and that was different from all the other donors who want you to have a big CV. And if you don't have someone to believe in you in the first place, then how are you going to build that CV? That was so different for us, and our initiative is actually to connect nine organizations in the Bikar from different regions, different religions, and work as citizens against the corruption and against the rule of sectarian politics in Lebanon. Uh, that was great to be helped actually, and we felt that we are so responsible, and that was a challenging responsibility, and we are doing our best in order to show that we, we deserve it, and I think this proves that we really deserve it. The third point where uh, I, I see that the European Endowment for Democracy is different is the continuous support for us, even uh, throughout the project. They uh, have visited us, uh, they uh, showed that uh, they are uh, so uh, concerned about building our capacities and that in this way we're not going to stay where we are, but we are going even to grow higher and higher. And we are looking forward to have some kind of training uh, with uh, an expertise who is going to go to Lebanon soon. Uh, so this kind of uh, follow-up is very important and this capacity building throughout the project is also very important for us. I can't but say thank you and thanks for all, for everything that you have done for us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very, very much. We are also very proud that uh, we have found you. This is what I want to say that uh, all our work wouldn't be possible if there are no genuine people who really share our values and who really want to do work together. As you all know and we all know, Democracy is something we cannot export. And only because of these people we are meeting today, it's only eight of them today with us, out of these 111 initiatives. Without them, no of our work would be really possible. Let me now invite the third speaker from Brussels. Uh, as Elmer Brock rightly said, endowment wouldn't be possible without a good cooperation between member states, institutions, and European Parliament. So let me have Marcus Cornara from the European Commission, Deputy Director General of the Europe Aid, to say a few words. He was, from the beginning, a great friend of this initiative. Marcus, please join us. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks Lord Yerji. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here and to speak, uh, both after the words of uh, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, Elmer Brock, a uh, very good address uh, by the Executive Chair, Alexander von Graf uh, Lambsdorff, uh, but already to have spoken after very moving testimonies of four of the beneficiaries. Uh, it's also nice that you would call me a friend from the start, uh, because if he were a bit more honest, he would have said that I was among the more skeptics uh, from the start. <laughs> Uh, understanding, understanding the political imperative of the time, having been a director neighborhood of the job now occupied by Michael Köhler, who is also here uh, um, among us, uh, but with a clear mandate to get this and make this uh, work. 
Uh, and yes, I do recall uh, the, the intense discussion we had uh, with the parliament, with member states, and already with a fledgling group of people who would uh, uh, make that work. And then when I saw this invitation come in for the one year's anniversary, I said, hey, this is a, a great moment I would not like to, like to miss. And then uh, in preparing for that moment, I sort of went through the services and uh, gathered, gathered feedback. And, and I'm embarrassed to say, Yerji, no criticism. <laughs> so I stand here with a, with a genuine, genuine uh, congratulations also from DG, DG Devko uh, on all fronts, uh, be it uh, the way we had cooperated, I think on many of the administrative issues, how we could engage and how to, uh, to set this up in a, in a proper way. Uh, more importantly, uh, no complaints, but congratulations only on having found the full complementarity with uh, the other type of programming uh, the European Commission can, uh, can fund, notably the European Instrument for Democracy and, uh, and Human Rights. Uh, and also full, full uh, praise and compliments on the type of beneficiaries uh, you had reached and we admit we would not have uh, reached. And to have heard uh, just four of the, would you say, ten, ten uh, beneficiaries present here on, on the immediacy and the impact of uh, support received. Uh, also with the, the leverage effect in terms of, uh, of presence and media and others. Uh, but also that you're not oblivion of the sort of our groundwork, the development, the capacity building is, uh, is impressive and, and reassuring. So that's certainly from, from our front. Uh, again, I repeat. A full congratulations uh, for a first anniversary. This is more than many uh, organizations can achieve and certainly very, very happy uh, to continue working on the front, be it the deepening or the widening uh, of your objectives. And, uh, and the last point, just to make sure that this is not just uh, bureaucracy speaking, but also Stefan Fühle, in fact, uh, asked me when we were at the Ukraine Forum uh, yesterday to make sure that I would uh, extend his personal uh, greetings uh, to that uh, initiative, yes, from the political front also, he was at the forefront, but he's uh, as much uh, pleased and politically impressed as, as we are, as, and uh, this is now sort of a firm, firm element uh, of a challenging, unfinished uh, European uh, neighborhood agenda and the wider Europe. So anyway, congratulations also from the European Commission, and uh, great to be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marcus, for these uh, kind words uh, and honest words. Um, indeed, the Commission had some, uh, at the beginning, good questions uh, to answer, but without good questions there is no good solutions. So it was very inspirational at the beginning, and I hope now it will uh, be uh, so smooth that everybody will be even surprised how smooth it can be. Nevertheless, uh, uh, let me come back to, um, uh, to our uh, beneficiaries. Uh, they will uh, not speak anymore, uh, just uh, in order to make our official part uh, shorter, but I want to personally introduce them. So I would like us, uh, Kirio, Christina, and others to, uh, to join me uh, now. Uh, Fadua, Pata, Kirio, and Christina, please come to the stage. Uh, so I want to quickly intro, introduce you. Uh, let me start uh, with, uh, <clears throat> with uh, Kristina uh, Berdinsky. Kristina is a young Ukrainian journalist on my left side. Uh, young uh, uh, journalist that started a Facebook uh, page telling a story about uh, Maidan. And in a very short time she was able to mobilize a large group of supporters internationally and suddenly she started to run 18 page in 16 or 17 languages. 17 languages. So the content was daily translated to 17 languages. And we discovered this and she was, uh, we were happy that she accepted our support, although she would do this without any support, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Fadoa uh, Maroc received EDI support to help establish in Morocco an association, the Raconte Méditerrane du Cinéma et des Droits de l'Homme, uh, which promotes uh, dialogue and critical thinking to the cinema and debate. They are extremely active and visible nowadays in, in Morocco. Finally, uh, Pata Gabridanshvili, who runs the Fax Check Georgia, the special uh, uh, website that is uh, uh, keeping uh, politicians accountable, what they say, 
how factual it is and how it reflects reality. So having here the politicians, uh, be careful, they can check also what you are saying. And this is extremely successful endeavor. Uh, at the beginning, everybody thought that this is just because uh, some of them became an opposition and uh, left government. But nowadays, uh, the present opposition and the present government is equally afraid of what they are saying. So I think that's a, a very clear measure of their success. And finally, Kirill Logorenko, who runs Hromatsky Radio. And uh, our executive committee took a decision to provide support to Hromatsky Radio just a month before Maidan started. So Putin is right, we made it. <laughs> well, fortunately, uh, to Ukraine, no, the Ukrainian made it. And the people like him were preparing themselves, were structuring the society, were working there to make your Maidan happen and possible when the people were unhappy with their governments to say it and to say it in a well-organized way. So congratulations for your Ukraine and endeavor. And now the radio is having uh, two hours broadcast through the state radio channel. So the Chromansky TV, which basically translates to citizens uh, radio, uh, internet-based radio became a supplier of the important part of the content to, uh, for the state-owned radio broadcasting and they are working very hard on the new uh, legislation and regulation for public broadcasting to be a really public broadcasting, not just a state broadcasting. Thanks all of you for being with us. Thanks to your work, democracy and the democratic values are strengthening all over the world and in your countries. And please stay on your path. We will try as much as we can to support you, but everything else depends on you. Thank you very much for your work.